Today on Rescue Vet, a marmoset is brought in for an emergency visit after his owner notices he's been coughing up blood. Will Dr. Berger be able to relieve this tiny primate of his illness, or is it too late to save him? I was hoping it was more of an infection and not anything more serious. It's hard to tell. A rescue cat is taken to Bee's Ferry Veterinary Hospital for a cough. Will he be diagnosed with an infection or a deadly disease? He could have until tomorrow, and he could have several years. Tina Murray has come from Ladson, South Carolina to see Dr. Berger after noticing her marmoset Chewy was coughing up blood. There's only two doctors that I know of in our state that can handle primates, Dr. Berger being one, and then there's one upstate. So I basically had to wait to be able to get him here. And so we just kind of cuddled him last night. She was very concerned that a little pound and a half marmoset could be coughing up that much blood. I was hoping it was more of an infection and not anything more serious. It's hard to tell. And the fact that it's coming from his nose bothers me. It's always traumatic to see the little monkeys coming in that are injured and, uh, you know, the cute little brown eyes looking up at you for help. And there's such a human-like quality to working with a monkey that you, you feel an even stronger bond, if possible, to try and get them feeling better quickly. The fact that he can work on primates obviously is a plus. I think he has a big heart when it comes to all animals. Not a lot of people want to take on the extra responsibility of the exotic animals. But there is a need because there are people everywhere that want exotic animals. Not necessarily should have exotic animals, but they want them nonetheless. I know you don't feel good. The diagnosis is unknown. But it is possible that Chewy has a deadly disease that may have been transmitted from a human. Things that might not kill us as humans could very easily kill them. There's just certain things you have to know that can transmit from us to them. And my daughter had bronchitis, so my worry is that he, he got it. When he first came in, I was worried that he had bit his, bitten his tongue or that he had had a fracture of his jaw. So what I was using the Q-tips for is to try and not put too much pressure just because their bones are so fine. And if I'm in there trying to open his jaw and he's got a fracture, I can make that a lot worse. I want to listen to his heart first just to make sure that he's not in shock and that we don't need to institute any emergency treatments. Listening to his lungs for any signs of infection or disease that could have caused the bleeding to come from the lungs primarily versus from trauma to the face. Okay. Yeah, they both sound really good. Yeah. Um, his heart rate was a little fast last night, but I figured he was just afraid. Yeah. Let me get a thermometer and we'll take a temperature. It's okay. Dr. Berger takes a stool sample to test it for deadly lung parasites, which can be common in monkeys. Chewy's fever is high, which leads Dr. Berger to believe the coughing may be caused by something else. Well, with the high fever, one would think that, you know, it's probably an abscess because high fever goes along with an abscess or a respiratory infection. We can't rule out whether that's a primary lung infection, whether that's an infection from a tooth root abscess, or that's just an infection from like a bacterial disease like a pneumonia. So those are the things that the fever points us toward. Let me pick him up. Oh, will not you get bit? It's okay, but would not be the first time I got bit. I know. Did you bite on that? Sorry to say this. It's okay, Chewy. We're looking for the teeth, any damage, any teeth that are pointing the wrong direction to indicate that maybe when he was in his exercise cage that he might have had some sort of trauma. 
We don't see any trauma. We did see some swelling above the molar on the back right side, and that's where we're localizing this lesion to, is probably a tooth root abscess. More choo -choo. and having decreased ability to breathe because he's not breathing out of one of his nostrils, I would rather not sedate him today. Okay. I'd rather try that first. At this point, we would consider taking blood from him to check his white blood cell count, but being a marmoset and not understanding what we're doing with him, we would have to anesthetize him to do this. And since he primarily breathes through his nose and it's clotted up with blood, we don't want to take the risk of anesthetizing him if we don't have to do that. Why don't we do this? I'll get the fever lower and I'll get him uh, the antibiotic, which is injectable. Okay. I'll start with that. Um, I'm going to call one of the zoos too to see if we can use okay. the antibiotic that lasts for two weeks rather than having to keep okay. have you give him an injection. So I'll give you about 10 minutes. Okay. I'll be back. Okay. Right. Okay, buddy. Yes, it's okay, Chewie. Amanda Fry has brought her recently adopted cat to Bees Ferry Veterinary Hospital because of a debilitating cough. I got him from a shelter, a local shelter around here, and nobody really knew where he came from. And I just fell in love with him and decided to give him a chance. He's here today because he's been coughing, and I'm just not really sure what's going on with him. Hello. Hello. I'm Dr. Lanford. How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is Atlas? This is little Atlas, yes. And what's going on with Atlas today? Well, he seems to be coughing some. Oh, goodness. Yeah. When did that start? I've noticed it the past couple of weeks. Do you have Atlas on any heartworm prevention? I used to be on heartworm prevention, but since, since he's indoor only, I just haven't um, just kind of stopped doing it. A lot of people do that, but that can be a big mistake. So let's take a listen and see what's going on. His heart sounds fine, but he does have a little bit of congestion in his lungs that worries me a little bit. Whenever we hear congestion in the lungs of a cat, there's a couple of different things that that can be. The most common thing um, is allergies. Um, they can also get asthma. They can get upper respiratory infections that can settle down in the chest. And then we also have to be concerned about the possibility of heartworms. I gave my cat heartworm prevention the first month, but you know, he, I don't let him outdoors. So I didn't think it was really necessary to give him heartworm or flea prevention. Cats get bitten by mosquitoes and that's how they get heartworms. So any area where there's low marshy ground like South Carolina, Florida, and the Mississippi Gulf Coast are all areas where cats are at high risk of heartworms. Some people make the mistake of thinking that because their cat is strictly indoors or um, they don't live in an area where they see a lot of mosquitoes that it's not important. Um, but even one month not on heartworm prevention, if the cat gets bitten that month, they can get heartworms. I'd like to test him for heartworms. Um, because he lives in South Carolina, that's a, a big problem. So we'll do a blood test and we'll be able to tell you um, within the next few minutes if that's what we're dealing with. At Bees Ferry Veterinary Hospital, Dr. Lanford has taken a blood sample from Atlas to test him for heartworms. We got the blood results back on Atlas, and it turns out that he is indeed positive for heartworms. We're gonna talk with Amanda about what we need to do from here on out. Okay. Hey, so we ran that heartworm test on Atlas, and he has tested positive for heartworms. When a cat is positive for heartworms, their prognosis is very uncertain. Um, they are at high risk of sudden death, and that could happen at any time very often with no warning. If we can keep everything suppressed and keep him comfortable, he could live for another few years, or some of the cats will actually um, self-cure and get rid of the worms and go on to live a normal lifespan. I'm definitely worried about him having heartworms, but I just hope I can give him a good second chance at life. 
So there's a few things that we're going to do for him. But the first thing that we're going to do is get some x-rays of his chest, okay. and that will tell us the degree of um, inflammation that's going on. Atlas is taken to radiology so that Dr. Lanford can examine x-rays of his lungs for signs of inflammation. The x-ray showed us that there is significant inflammation in Atlas's lungs, so we need to handle that with some anti-inflammatory medication because that's why he's been doing some coughing. The odds are good that Atlas already had heartworms at the time that Amanda adopted him. Um, it takes months to years for heartworms to develop. Dr. Lampford said that he could have until tomorrow, and he could have several years. It really depends. So, you know, it kind of depends on, you know, getting his inflammation down and keeping him on his medication and putting him on heartworm prevention from here on out, which I plan to do to keep him healthy. And just take it day by day. If I notice that his quality of life isn't what it should be, you know, I'll definitely think about having to euthanize him. Hopefully. With his, his medication will make him feel better, and that'll be a long, long way from now. As a veterinarian, one of the hardest parts of the jobs is telling somebody, especially someone who's just adopted a pet, that they are going to be battling a potentially life-threatening disease. But that's also part of the reward of the job, is that I can help her through this. Primates can become violent and bite when given injections, but Dr. Berger feels that Chewy's fever is high enough to take that risk and inject a necessary fever reducer. Quick and painless. It doesn't really sting all that much. He doesn't think so. <laughs> Anytime you give him a shot, you know, you're worried about getting bitten. So I was a little surprised that he jumped as much as he did, but he maintained his composure and let us give him the, the medication. So all, all's well that ends well. Hopefully, the ibuprofen shot will reduce Chewy's fever and diminish his pain. While the ibuprofen shot is helping reduce Chewy's fever, Dr. Berger will inject a shot of antibiotics in hopes that it will cure whatever potential infection he may have. It's okay, Chewy, I know. We're trying to get you good. Anytime there's an infection in the body, we want to start him on the antibiotics. We're going to give him an injection of antibiotics today to get him started. We're trying to go down this route rather than rush into the diagnostics until we can get the bleeding stopped. It's OK, buddy. OK. All done. OK. It's all over with you. So it's one a day starting tomorrow. OK. This is five days worth. He may need a refill. Okay. We'll just have to play it by ear. It's like us, you know, you get a nosebleed, you elevate. Right. So you can tilt his head back, great. If not, if it stresses him out, just yeah. a couple of drops right in the nostril. Okay. I mean, it doesn't have to be like syringe in the nose. Right. Just if you can just get it, like, wipe away the excess and put a drop. Yeah. If it's not a lot better by Monday, as far as the bleeding is concerned, we get a sedate. It's a sedated picture. Okay. Tina will have to monitor Chewy for the next 48 hours. If his condition has not improved, Chewy will have to be put under anesthesia so that Dr. Berger can do some blood work and take x-rays. OK. All right, good luck. Let's hope he's OK. All right, let me know. I will. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. It's my baby. I mean, there's a lot of times we go to the doctor, and they may not necessarily know what's causing our, our fever or whatever, and they give us the antibiotic, and we get better. So I'm hoping that that's what will happen with him. You know, we'll start checking his temperature again tomorrow, give the, um, the fever reducer time to take effect, and uh, hopefully that'll be what he needed. Otherwise, we bring him back in Monday. Six months have passed since Atlas was diagnosed with heartworms. Today, Amanda is bringing Atlas in to find out what has been causing him to have more health problems. He's been coughing still, and um, he's having some upper respiratory problems. Like, his eyes have been really swollen shut at some, time, at some points. And um, he's had discharge from his nose and sneezing. And so I'm just trying to find out whether that's um, related to the heartworms or if there's something else I can be doing for it. 
Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Hi, Atlas. What's been going on with Atlas? He's been having a lot of upper respiratory problems. He's doing better right now, but it was, it's was it been pretty okay. gross. But I'm just guessing a little bit paranoid since the heartworm Absolutely. test and every little thing he does, I'm really worried that something's wrong and he's not going to be okay. And we can see in his eyes that he definitely has some conjunctivitis. So when I look in his eyes and I see that he has conjunctivitis, some discharge and redness, um, that's not caused by heartworms. So then we start to think more about a viral infection, allergies, upper respiratory problems, that type of thing. Let's see how his chest is doing. Okay. I know. It's okay, buddy. We're gonna take a listen. All right, Atlas. Okay, Atlas. You're okay, bud. Here we go. All right. I think at this point, because he is having some upper respiratory issues, we should do some follow-up work on him. Okay. Let's take an x-ray again okay. and see what his chest looks like. Okay, sure. And follow up some blood work. Sure. That'd okay. Be great. All, All right. right. Thanks. You're Thanks welcome. very much. I'm just really worried. I mean, he was a rescue, so I know he has some problems, but, you know, in the six, seven months I've had him, I've just really gone attached to him, and, and I'm just worried. I hope he's going to be okay. Hi. I'm Brooke. Hi, nice to I'm meet you. I'm your veterinary you. nurse. Nice we'll to meet you. We'll be working with Atlas today. Okay. We'll draw his blood today just to check his levels. A lot of cats can get kidney disease, thyroid problems, and um, just for to check his general health and be able to compare his blood work today okay. to his blood work in the future. Okay. Make sure that his organs are functioning like they're supposed to. Atlas's temperature is 101.3, which is a good sign. Anywhere from 100 and 103 is normal for cats. All right, so we're going to draw his blood. All right, Mr. Atlas. Good kitty. OK, great. So we'll send this off to a lab. OK. And it'll take about two days for us to get our results. And we'll call you with those. OK, great. Wow, oh, bud, you did good. The blood work results will help determine if Atlas is responding well to the medication. X-rays are being taken of Atlas's lungs to see if his inflammation has decreased since being on heartworm medication. Okay. Well, I've gone over everything. Okay. I've reviewed his x-rays. Okay. I don't know if you remember the last time, but there yes. was a lot of inflammation. Mm -hmm. You've yes. been doing a really good job with his prednisone, and the inflammation is down a lot. The reason that he was coughing previously is because of the inflammation caused by the heartworms. Okay. And we have suppressed that by the use of the prednisone. But as we suppress that um, inflammation in his lungs, unfortunately, we also make him more susceptible to getting infections okay. like viruses and colds and things like that. That's why he started sneezing and getting the conjunctivitis, the inflammation in his eyes. All right. So it's a balancing act with okay. his immune system at this point. So now what we're doing is we're decreasing the prednisone dose to try and keep him from getting upper respiratory infections. But what can happen as we do that is the inflammation can come back up in the lungs. And if that happens, Atlas is at high risk for sudden death. We'll take his dose down to half what he's on now. Okay. And we'll check him again in another six months. Okay. And we'll just play it by ear. My hope for Atlas is that he's one of the lucky ones and he has Amanda taking really good care of him. So I um, hope that uh, he stays on his medications and she stays on top of everything, that we keep checking him and he's able to get rid of the heartworms. The worst thing that could have happened to Atlas is for him to have a sudden respiratory death alone and unloved or in a shelter. And no matter how long he has, He's in a loving home, and he will know that. And for that, Amanda can feel really, really good. 
I'm really thankful that Dr. Lampford um, you know, put me at ease today and I'm just really glad to know that I can call or bring him up anytime I'm unsure or you know, he's not doing too well and they can take a look at him and I'm just going to take it one day at a time and you know, I just love him, I've already fallen in love with him and you know, just want to make him happy and the rest of his life with me really happy and healthy. After a couple of days of antibiotic treatment, Chewy is back to his old self and is no longer coughing up blood. Chewy's bleeding stopped from his nose 48 hours, just as we had hoped after he started the antibiotics. He started eating and drinking again very well the next day, so that's an indication that the pain was under control. We're happy that it was a simple fix and not anything more serious, and that uh, he didn't go downhill, he went uphill. So I think this is a tooth root abscess. There's no way to know 100%, but it appears that the antibiotics worked on the infection, the bleeding stopped, the pain went away, the monkey started eating again. So it was the right choice not to rush into an anesthetic experience and put the monkey's life at risk to take it, take it conservatively and make sure that the antibiotics work, which is what happened. He's playing, he's chirping, he's singing. The coughing up blood, and sneezing it out and blood everywhere was definitely a very frightening, frightening thing. I feel really excited today that, he, that she was feeling better. The owner's really happy and excited. She was really worried about him. We were really worried about him. We wanted to make sure that we could get him over this. At this point, because he's been in our life so long, I can't imagine him not being in our life, but um, he's doing better, so we're, we're happy. He's going to sleep.